So welcome everyone. Uh, before I go into what exactly reframe is and why we use it at CSCS, I want to give you some, some idea what what is the background that we had and why we use reframe. So we use we do regression testing a lot at CSCS to guarantee quality of service. So it was very nice that we have just a precise talk and he was talking about the difficulties they have to guarantee the quality of the performance of the software and the sanity of the software, right? Guarantee they're correct. So that's exactly the open source tool that we can provide not only to precise but to the entire community on how actually solve this problem. So at CSCS, because we invest a lot on guaranteeing quality of service of our computer services, we test every single computer every day. We test everything. So we, we, how we used to do that? We used to write this big shell script that would go into everything and test, see if the performance was being correct, if, it's, if the numbers were being produced correctly. And it was really tough to maintain because we were doing a nice thing but using a not very nice uh, software methodology. So for that we started to develop in a better framework that's called Reframe that we can actually do the testing. Reframe is actually written in Python, in Python 3, and we try to make it easy for anyone to use it, from software developers to system administrations to uh, any normal user who wants to just run our cluster and can test their software. So we, uh, the way that we try to do that is basically abstracting away our computing systems or the internals of the computing systems. Some things that we uh, are difficult to, for some users to run in HPC systems because we do have modules, we have different MPIs, and the MPIs are highly customized for that computer node, that, that computing system. And when you change the cluster, you have to use another MPI because the other MPI is highly customizable for that one. So you have to be keeping track of all these things. Uh, so we try to, we try to simplify the usage of the of the well, regression testing or how testing uh, on reframe by abstracting away these concepts. So that way, basically the person who is writing the checks, or if I want to write, for instance, a precise check, I don't need to think about it. I just have to think about the logics. How will my, what will my, out, my program will need as input, what will my program need as output, or what I can read from output, and how can I measure the performance. So we have been developing reframes internally in CSCS since 2016. We went public and now in 2019 we basically have 18 forks and 32 uh, 35 stargazers. Right? Last week was 32. That's the reason why I said 32. It's a bit tough to, to count these things because it's all the time being updated because people are actually using it. And one of the reasons why people are using reframe is because we have a very nice design goals. One of the design goals we have is productivity. So which means that whenever we have a user, we report the bug, and the user, this bug, we can test it later. What we do, we write a test. So it allows us, Reframe allows us to actually, on the fly, easily write tests. Uh, because we do have systems from basic Linux box with Red Hat installed, CentOS installed, SLS installed, from highly customized Linux like Cray systems, we want our tests also to be portable. So we, we, we think a lot about portability. We don't want to write on test on one system and have to rewrite it to another system. One, one, one thing that I like about Reframe is that we have been running this daily in our systems and we have never seen a stack trace of Python. Why? Because we are really robust. So we do a highly testing not only of the systems but also of Reframe. So we use Reframe to test Reframe. One of the key features of Reframe is actually, oh, as I said before, the separation of the program environment and the system. Right? So you don't really have to care much about that. One thing that, for those who actually have experience with uh, HPC, you always have to run jobs in HPC. You don't really log in into the compute node. You do to a scheduler. So in general, they do what's called workload manager. So you can ask to say, I want a, a thousand compute nodes, then you get a thousand compute nodes, and then how you run your simulation there, you got a launcher, SRAM in our case, because it uses LERM, and then you're gonna run MPI calculations across this entire th a thousand, a thousand uh, machines, compute nodes. 
And some of these 1,000 compute nodes may be GPU enabled. We have a pretty big system with 5,300 GPUs. And the same system has 1,900 more or less CPU only machines. So you actually, to, to run in one case, on the other case, we have to select what's called a partition. So you have to go to the GPU partition or non GPU partition. So on reframe, we also want to abstract out these concepts. So we don't really want the users to be thinking about, hey, I have to be here, I have to be there, I have to run this way, this way. We just abstract out a lot of things. One of the, 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 the concepts that we have also reframe is we want to guarantee that we have a very complete uh, documentation. So if you go to our website, you're going to see the, the reader docs, and you're going to be able to see our documentation start using it. So we're going to have tutorials. And on computer systems, on HPC systems, we have a lot of different people working on them. For instance, I work in the user support team and I'm PhD in chemistry. I'm not a computer scientist. And how can I be developing, how can I be using Reframe? The, the, the reason we can do that is because we abstract out the people who are actually using Reframe from the people who are actually developing tests. Uh, we try to make easy for everyone who doesn't have a PhD in computer science, let's say, to, so someone who has a is minimal knowledge of Bash to be using it. So we have two different APIs. One's called the front-end API. It's actually you call how to run Reframe, and we want it to be as simple as possible. So we only have, we have some flags, but if you want to run it, the minimal flag you have to do is minus R, minus R. And we like the dreaming face guy. He's actually, in general, a user who wants to run Reframe or a system administrator, but you also have a service at CSCS that you can run Reframe to a Jenkins, so you can have a robot running your code and taking precise and checking the performance of precise whenever you make a pull request, for instance. We also, for, for those who actually are developing uh, reframe tests, that's not so difficult also. So what you have to do is basically write a, a Python class and inherit from regression test and decorate it with a small decorate called simple test. The simple test allows us to basically go through what's called a pipeline that I will show you later. And also enables you all the functionalities internal to the API, like the system abstraction and the environment abstraction. The environment abstraction is in, in, in HPC is not only about the variables that you have, but also about the modules system that you have. So some, some systems have T mod, some systems have L, uh, L mod, T mod 4. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is an environment, uh, environment managers, module managers, where you can actually load with different versions of software. And you don't, need have, you don't have to care about it when you're running at CSCS, what's the type of, of modules you're using. One thing that we can say, okay, they, these guys are really doing abstracting, and so these things must be really difficult to use. In practice, it's not. The simple class that I'm talking about in general looks like that. So, okay, I'm crumping the lines because it's, I have to fit into a slide, but as you can see, you just need to put like a descriptor if you want to give a nice name. You have, to have your class, let me see if I can do this. So have your class, you basically init function inheriting from the regression test. You write a description name just to give you a nice description of what your test does. You say, I want to run on Pitsdite, which is our this big cluster I told you with 5,300 GPUs, on the GPU part of the cluster. And then you can say, I want to test the, G, the GNU compiler, the Cray compiler, and the PGI compiler. I can say, my, the input file of my, my test is this .cu file, so it's going to be like a, a NVIDIA or CUDA source. So Reframe will identify that when you say single source, and we call the NVCC compiler. So he identifies the ending of your single sources and call the appropriate compiler. And we will comp be compiling these, these applications using the basic flags, the minus O3, and use, you can give like executable options. On our systems, you need to know basically what's the module you have to load for, for CUDA, so, but you can do a mapping. You can always say CUDA toolkit means these module use or that, or module load that specific module. You can do mappings. And on this big cluster that I told you, that we have just one GPU per node. So you can do the test with one GPU. But you can, do, you can say here, like, 
If I am on, test, on system A, do two GPUs, I'm system B, do four GPUs. And so the way we do, by guaranteeing that we have a sanity check, guarantee if you have like a, the, the values are correct, we do this, what's called sanity patterns, and you strike out, you extract information from your test. So in this case, if the line time for single metrics is found in the study out, you're gonna guarantee that it was passed. Because actually this is the last line of your, of your output. And then we can look at the output and it will say something like performance, that was in gigaflops per second, and then if you look for this, for this, for this line, extract, extract out this, this pattern, convert it to a float, and then we're gonna be able to compare. So this number here, 50, is just a dummy number. So if this number is within 10% of this 50, we're gonna pass performance. So as you can see, we're just trying to abstract away in all the logics of doing grab or getting the things, comparing, converting to numbers into reframe. I can say that, yes, nice, these tests we can, we can write, but do you really use it in, like, can I really use for my precise, can I really use for my scientific applications? Yes, so we have like a, a, an application at CSCS yes, that's actually been developed every day and they test it and they use CMake in this case and this is how, how complex it is for them to write a test. So they say, I need CMake and I need this version of GCC because they were specific for this version and I need to compile with these options. These compile options, my, my code. And voila, they get the code. Because we are using Python and now we can use the amazing computer science concepts that we could not use in Shell. One of them is OO, so I can inherit. I can say, you know what, now I have my MPI version of the test, sorry, my MPI version of the test. To compile with MPI, I need this flag. So now I have two tests. I have the, the previous test, that was the basic one, that was only compiling with a set on, and I have now a second test that is basically doing the MPI version. And we can go on. We can actually not only a simple test on top, but we can also have this parameterized test. Then I have a factory. So instead of having actually to write a factory class or a factory function to spawn several tests, I can parameterize them. So in this case, I will be parameterizing a different test that will compile for Haswell, Broadwell architecture, and a native architecture that can be the current one that you're using, can be any, any other uh, architecture. Right, so you can see it's really simple to, to write tests on reframe. And the pipeline that you get by adding these simple tests and these parameters is a very fixed one. And this, this pipeline is, is more or less the following. You start the front end, you can say reframe minus R. What reframe you do, you go into a folder that you, that you say, and then you look at all the Python files inside, import all of them that are reframe tests. And then it will start running, so you're gonna pick a test, and you check, hey, is this test meant to be run on this system? If yes, we continue. If no, we just skip the test. And then with the same applies to every single, every single uh, conditions that you can impose. We can say, is this, is this test to support the program environment? So in my laptop, do I have a Cray compiler or not? If I say, no, I don't have a Cray compiler on my laptop, I'm gonna skip the Cray test. I'm gonna go continue to the, no, to the GNU test where I have. I can go to the Clang test that I have on my, on my laptop. And then this step you actually run on the machine that you actually have executed. On our, on our supercomputing center, what we have is actually, we also have these compute nodes, right? That you spawn that, to the scheduler, uh, your execution. So we, we can, so we, we do the we, we do this, all this analysis in in a compute node, and you can run the test. Oh, sorry, on the local node, and we can run the test on the compute node. So we take your test, we verify it's valid, we set up the environment, so you clone, we guarantee that you run in on a same environment that's always equal to the the, the test that you have the environment that you have executed reframe. You compile your test if it's necessary, and we spawn these tests. Okay, my laptop does not have a workload manager, right? My laptop is just my laptop. I don't want to be installing things that I don't need. So one of the things that we don't need a workload manager, at least I don't need it. So what I do is basically on my laptop, I can say my workload manager is a local scheduler. So you actually just emit a batch script and it runs on my local laptop. So this way, 
we can run from a laptop to Travis to our HPC systems. Uh, one thing that we talk when we talk to the people from operations, they say, oh, system means they say, oh, the system is saying. For them, saying means the system is getting the correct numbers and getting the right performance. On reframe nomenclature, we are a bit different. Same for us means that we are actually giving the correct science, which means that I'm giving the correct number. And performance means that we're actually performing in that given range of value that we're expecting, that gigaflops of that time frame. So we do have different steps for checking the performance and, and checking the sanity. And after, if your test has, has passed or not, we clean up the stage and continue, and then report at the end. One, one, one way that you can do, or one type of test that you can do, is that you, you can compile only tests if you don't want to be running anything. If I want to compile a library, you can compile it. If you want to run only tests because you have already compiled, I don't know, an application in your computer, you can run it only. And you can, so we have helped the user, or we have already predefined classes that you can do that. Uh, the way that you can actually define what is the, the, the paths that you have for your checks is minus C. Uh, command line, but you can also define different configuration files to actually define what is your laptop, what is this HPC center, and what is the other HPC center that you are running. So this configuration file allows us to map different systems and run the same test on different systems. So how does it look like when you run reframe? It looks like this. Basically, if you have passed all the tests, they will just say run, okay, passed, run, okay, passed. So I can run okay, I can run GNU, that example test, for instance. If something doesn't, doesn't pass, what happens is that it will run, you say failed, and at the end you say the, the entire regression failed with one test case. And then you say report a failure. In this case, I just run one test, one check, so you only see one failure here. But you can, you can see the reason why it was failing was performance, so it, it passed sanity. And the reason is because this number here is beyond the range that we have defined, the reference range, right? Uh, one of the nice things for HPC centers is that we care about the users a lot. And by caring about the users, we need to guarantee that whenever a user reports an error, we can identify the reason why. That means that we save a lot of logs. So at CS specifically, we have a centralized log logging service that we save all CIS logs. And Reframe can also send to that syslog. So we can send all the performance of all applications that we are running daily at CSCS to this centralized and plot graphs. For instance, like as you can see, this is basically the logs of Reframe execution of one application that's called Umber running the GPU, and this is the CPU version. You see a bit fluctuates. And then we can understand why, and we can report why it was smaller or why it was higher. Then we can understand. The usage that we have for reframe inside CSCS, in our National Computer Center, is basically we run through all the three major clusters that we have, that are Pitsdine, Pitscash, and Leone. Pitsdine is uh, anyone can access to projects. Pitscash is the, the one that we do the climate calculations, so the, the, the simulations that say it's going to rain or not rain, they are done in our center. And the Leone is a private cluster for a customer, for a customer. So there, on these three clusters, we run what's called production test that I told you that we run daily, maintenance test that we basically run before doing an upgrade in the system, and after doing an upgrade in the system, and what we call diagnostics. When a node goes bad, we run some tests to bring it back before. And why you do that? Because we have seen really nice things with Reframe that allows us to probe and improve the quality of services. Sometimes we, before the upgrade, we, the application is running with a given performance. After the upgrade, the application drops performance or increases performance. So then we go investigate what, the reason why. In the majority of the case, we can bring the performance up back to the original. And if we didn't have reframe to actually monitor that, the performance would be bad and we wouldn't notice. Only the user will be complaining. So the way we do that, we use Stroh Jenkins, so reframe is a, is taken from Jenkins, and then we can see that the, the nice thing about Jenkins is that you have all these nice uh, interfaces that we can, we don't need to, we don't need to care about logging into the system, we can just uh, look to the uh, web browser. So, we like it very much, because it guarantees the quality of services of our systems, and our, the application that we support, but we also want to empower users. So at CSCS, we have a CI service. 
So you can apply for computer, computer time at CSCS, apply for a CI service there, and then be running, let's give an example, precise every day and test if it was performing and at, our, at a, a real supercomputing center. For that, we have actually integrated test reframing integrations not only in our, in our CI service, but also on public services like Travis, for instance. This way we allow you to be developing on your laptop, test and reframe on your lo local laptop, making the pull request to GitHub, working on Travis, the same test that you have written for your laptop, and bringing the same test to our computing center so you cross boundaries uh, testing it. And at, internally we use Jenkins, so the usage is the same that we have for our own, for our own own tests, right? So for us, it's really nice because we can debug in the same interface. So this is how it looks like internally at CSCS, and as you know, this is how it looks like on Travis, right? So we can actually have a nice integration in, in all these cases. So just to conclude, I know I speak very fast, and I have spoken very fast, but just to summarize the take-home message about what reframe. Reframe is a regression test framework that allows us to guarantee quality of our software, and it's written in Python 3. It can be portable across different computing systems, from your laptop to HPC systems, can be used in different HPC systems, and gives you a nice way to verify where you have failed, right, to get comprehensive reports. One, one thing that we are missing on Reframe is dependency of tests, so you can say test A depends on test B, which depends on test C, so it's, one of, it's on our future direction, our world map. And we have support to run any command line inside Reframe, but we only say that we support something if the usage of that thing is really simple. So today we do, we do support containers at CSCS, we run container tests at CSCS, but we don't say we support containers because it, the usage is still right, too much commands. We, want, we are working on simplified interface so you can say, this is my container, this is what I want to run, and run it to make, to make everybody's life easy. And we have been asked by one computer center to have what's called benchmarking mode so we, we can stress the system and get different reports only. But this is very specific to supercomputing where you want to, to kill a machine, want to stress to see the limits. So, we have some partners that we have been using Reframe, as you can see, and the majority of them are supercomputing centers, but we have some companies involved. And if you're using Reframe and you haven't told us, please tell us, because we have many people using it and we, 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 that we didn't, we didn't know. So we, I want to acknowledge the team that has been developing Reframe internally at CSCS. As you can see, we have a lot of people, so we, because Reframe and regression testing is very important for us. Uh, so this is a project that was not going to go away in the near future, for sure, because HPC centers, they do require regression testing. With that, I want to thank you for your attention and any questions. Any questions for Victor? Yeah. Yeah, so the question was, if I understood, you can only write tests in Python. Actually, no. I mean, this test is written actually in, the, the, the test itself in reframe is written in Python, but this, this application is, a, is an NVIDIA application, right? So you can say, I want to run this script, just put the script there, and you're going to run the script. But, but you still have to write this for uh, Python? Uh, yeah, you, are, you, are, you still have to write, wrap this, this interface, yes. So the comment was basically that by adding this step of writing the class, it may add some complexity, right? Because you just had the, your shell script before, and now you don't have it. Yeah, this is true. In the beginning of Reframe, by 2016, 
we, we, we shared the reframe a bit with operations, and they said, dude, this is very, very difficult to use. This is like, we have to have a PhD in computer science to use it, because it was very difficult to use. So we are slowly in, in incrementally the interface to make it as easy as possible, right? So we have a, some, some internal ideas that I don't know if I can share about simplifying these and using different uh, input methods. But it's not there yet. It's now roadmap, but it's not in the near future roadmap. So yes, today you still have to do some Python to have it. Yeah, you have this layer, Python layer. Yeah, yeah. So just one comment from Vasilis, the lead developer of Reframe. So yeah, I mean, as you said, it's it's it seems like like a, a com an extra complexity to write Python class around your test. But I if you just have a single type of system to test, then that's fine. Go for a shell script. But imagine you have to test different on different HPC systems, then the complexity really becomes. Uh, uh, m much higher, and you want to abstract this away. Uh, for example, you don't you want to have in your script the logic of, uh, ah, did my job finish? Uh, when did they finish? Uh, we have examples of uh, people developing software, and they have ended up writing a thousands of lines of bar script just doing stuff uh, that we're handling by the framework, and they could do the same stuff with 20 lines of Python code, because we have separated the system part versus the logic of the test. That's the key advantage. Yes, I agree, you have to learn a bit of Python, write something, but in the longer term, and uh, depending on what you want to do, then it's, it can really untie your hands. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor.